Hello and welcome to the Friday, June 3rd, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Sorry for pushing out yesterday's podcast a bit late, I just forgot to run the bash script that does the post-processing and thanks for everybody noting that, uh, makes me feel like someone is actually listening, so you may see actually two Friday podcasts because the Thursday one came out a little bit late and uh, was labeled as Friday. If you're getting into instant response and uh, forensics, uh, of course, one of the challenges is always sort of that initial, uh, I call it triage part, where you have a system that's slightly compromised and you quickly need to figure out how bad is it? Is it worth diving in deeper? So to help you answer this, uh, we today have a diary by one of our undergraduate interns, uh, Logan uh, Fluke, who wrote up a quick introduction into RecMD, and that's a tool that was created by Eric Zimmerman. If you are into instant response, you are for sure familiar with his uh, tools, and it's essentially a command line interface for Registry Explorer to extract values from the registry hive using a little batch file where you can sort of specify what values you may be interested in. The output is a CSV file, so ideally suited for then additional processing with simple command line tools, or if you insist to throw it into a tool like Excel or Timeline Explorer, for example, and that's what Logan is explaining here. So if you're interested in a tool, you can see the quick walkthrough in today's diary. Then we have a coordinated uh, release uh, between uh, Wallexity and Atlassian regarding uh, vulnerability in Atlassian Confluence that's already actively exploited. It's an unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability, so about as bad as it gets. CVE 2022-26134 and Velexity has observed exploitation and the attacker then used a memory-based implant in order to evade detection. All versions of Confluence Server and Data Center are affected. As I'm recording this, uh, there is no patch available. The advisory from Atlassian mentions that you will, uh, should of course, restrict uh, Confluence Server and Data Center instances from the internet, which is a good practice anyway, given the exploit and vulnerability history of uh, this software. And definitely watch those servers carefully and look at Velexity's blog post for any kind of indicators of compromise or so that you could use in order to figure out if your server is already compromised. Now, I believe you'll get a patch for Confluence pretty quickly, but you're kind of out of luck if you're using the Corenix technology Jetport series devices. These devices, according to a bulletin published by Sec Consult, do use a backdoor account. And well, Sec Consult has notified Corenix and its parent company about two years ago about this particular. Uh, vulnerability, but uh, Karenic stated that they are not going to fix it. There are a total of three accounts present in these devices, a root without password, and then an admin user with a password of admin, and then there is the super RD account. Now, uh, this uh, particular account is the only account that's able to log in remotely. So the Simple admin and no root password is less of an issue here. But uh, yes, uh, there is sort of a static password for this super RD account. Chronix says that they're not really worried about this uh, because uh, it's very difficult to actually brute force uh, this uh, password. Sec Consult also states that they haven't cracked it. Not sure how hard they tried. It's only hashed using MD5. And we have yet another ransomware gang going after Elasticsearch databases. Again, at least the SecureWorks is reporting that they found a respective ransomware note 
on a wiped uh, database. Overall, they found the same ransomware note on 1,200 different Elasticsearch databases that were exposed to the internet. Not clear if you would actually be able to get your data back, but most likely in these cases, they just deleted it and are not actually keeping a backup copy of your data. So in short, don't keep your database exposed. Elasticsearch, Mongo, ODB. Yes, a lot of developers are sort of enticed to expose them because it's so easy to connect to them via JavaScript and such, but uh, use some authentication or put them even better behind some proxy and properly segment them off the internet. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Also, the SANS Fire event page, I believe, went up on the SANS.org website. So if you're interested in meeting some of our handlers in person, also, of course, some great classes there. It's starting in just about 40 days, mid-July. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.